Welcome, it's Crypto Sniper. Bad to be back with you. Look at the colors. Look at the colors. Yes, back in the, uh, what is it, vendor? I'm not too sure. Anyway, let's get on with crypto. What are we going to talk to you about? Well, we haven't spoken to you in a bit because not too much has been happening, really. Um, and we're going to talk to you about a token we haven't mentioned before. Uh, and we're going to talk to you about one we have mentioned before. And of course, we'll look at Bitcoin. How about we do that? But before we do that, uh, before we go there, a little bit of twisting your head and getting you a little macroeconomic wiser. Yeah. So with that, I'm going to show you a totally non-crypto chart. And that is gold divided by copper. Eh? What's he doing? Why is he doing that? I want crypto when moon. No, no, no. You want to listen? Have a look. Have a look. Okay, so this goes into some of the detail uh, of what we regularly discuss. And it's been this bugger. It's been this sort of, you've had to hold this joker card and saying, here's what I think is going to happen, however. And this is specifically to this period that we're currently in. Um, all bets are off if the joker card gets thrown on the table. We've referred to that as the demand destroying event, which is, we, look, there's always a possibility that you can have a macro demand destroying event, but when you're in a true boom, uh, there's real movement, none of the things are particularly perverse in terms of debt, credit cards, you know, a whole bunch of things, you can at least have a bit of clear road in front of you. During this period, we have actually had any number of downside risks that could take place uh, at a flick of a switch, uh, a click of a finger. And um, I'm here to say we're kind of waiting for the full news on the name for that demand destroying event and potentially another element of complete capitulation. And it's here and it's close is what we are saying. Closer than normal. Um, and it could be any day. Uh, and it could be financial, uh, banks, because of the whole debt, it could be war, it could be any number. Let's not go there. There's a whole number of downside risks that are deeply, deeply existent. By the way, crypto peeps should be smart. There is also a way that you can have something a little bit less leveraged. Yeah, silver or gold. This is a silver. Nice little certificate on the back. Comes in a nice little box. Grab the link below. Oh, this one is a kilo of the finest. Uh, all four nines, just beautifully, beautifully cut package that even comes in a little condom. So you can have safe with it if you feel how nice it feels. Oh, I like it too. I'm not sure I'll try anything with it though. Um, so back to the chart that we're talking about. You are here in the blue circle. You are here in the blue circle thinking, what was he going on about silver? And why is he showing me a gold uh, and copper chart when I'm here for cryptos? Link below, buy your silver. Don't forget, pure gold. Uh, and if you're in the US, ITM trading. So the, the point he's making to you is that the potential for that event is really potentially close. I haven't been to the future. I can't tell you anything with absolute certainty. But we are currently here, and this is a bad indicator uh, and there's many others like this, by the way. Don't forget the yield curve inversion. I show you many of these things. Some of them I've done here on the crypto channel. I don't want to rinse, repeat. Anything new happens there of a major degree, I'll tell you. So there's many others that have all been triggered. That's why we say uh, it's not just on uh, a parallel of a monetary commodity, gold, divided by an industrially needed one for economic activity, very low in price, copper. And we've also highlighted on our other channel, The Market Sniper, which you can free to go over, click and subscribe to as well, uh, to be even better on up on the macro, because we don't do too much macro here. People want crypto, but they need to understand the possibility here is that we're going to have a little bit of a further spill to the downside uh, and that we may not be at the low. I've kind of encompassed it in a TG pink, almost like a Bollinger band that's just drawn by me. Don't get uh, too excited by it. But this is that chart encased. And I've put in the economic crises. So peak.com was 2000. Um, you were getting a little bit sketchy at 99. You had a final rally. Then you went into the 2001 to recession. This is all bad things. 
Then you did such a liquidity. Pumpamentals. Yes, that was yours truly. It was Greenspan into Benank. Uh, Shlomo, that's right. And Shlomo pumped, pumped. He studied the depression. So he wanted to make sure he gave us one so that his job could have meaning. And that's what he did. He gave the biggest, he was part of the biggest pumpamentals into it. And then he was around for the dumpamentals. So this was the most extreme economic event. And it was a depression, no matter what they tell you. And there it was surrounded definition of de uh, depression, two years of negative growth rates and bank failure. You don't know that. But they don't like to talk about it. They tell you what a recession is but not a depression uh, but there are other takes on it and some of the stats said oh you didn't quite get two years we got a 0.1 here where they lied damn lies and statistics so you might argue that on the official statistics you didn't get two years you absolutely did this dragged the normal range for this that was in and around here a whole bunch lower and we've never come back since you'll see the post ranges is more like that Thank you very much. That's what throwing unsound money principles and proliferation does. You get diminishing returns. So if this high end is feel good factor, you want to be in the green. Awesome. If you're at the bottom end on the pink, uh, it's not so good as being in the pink. You kind of think of it more as blood than what you're thinking there, dirty boy. Um, so no, uh, it's not good. It's not good to be down here. It's not good to be down here. Why? Not enough building, not enough economic activity. Copper's in everything. It's a bit like a uh, call on the short oil long uh, Gold, uh, generally, it is a concern. It is a concern, this. And this one doesn't go up if a war starts and things start hotting up in Beirut, um, any other of the genocide farm that the Zio complex is cultivating for us. Um, so, <clears throat> with this said, you had peak.com, you had peak, woohoo, never felt so good. That was the Peter Schiff. By the way, we'll have Peter Schiff for the crypto guys. That'll antagonize a bunch of people um, on our channel on Market Sniper. Uh, but, um, he's become the sort of anti crypto, um, I don't know, uh, avatar of sorts. Um, that was during his period where he was saying, listen, the economy isn't great. There's too much borrowing. There's bad borrowing and all of that. So he was made to look pretty good during that period with everyone else laughing at him. And then, of course, the collapse came uh, and they all look very stupid on the Peter Schiff was right uh, element. Uh, I know you won't like that uh, because you're pro crypto, but he uh, was right. Uh, he was right and accurate on that. QE1 and 2, QE1 and 2 over here brought back a little bit of life, a lot of creating the new money. This was the first time the West had done it. Remember, Japan, Japan had in fact done it uh, before. Then QE3, and then we slumped into the Shanghai Accord, which was very low as well. That's after China did the same subprime thing, just didn't do it at the same time, so that they were buying everything and all during this 08, 09, 13, 14 period, it was like, wow, you know, China's going to rule the world. Yeah, um, they may still, but that was peak China, everything. And then they did a debt experiment so that we could all be lepers in the leper colony. They basically kissed the Western leper so that they could get the disease too and went down with it as well. And that's when the central banks of the world coordinated, coordinated, must do, must do, synchronize, synchronize, and gave them a little bit bump up. And we had a little bit of peace and quiet in 18. It didn't feel too terrible. Now the normal amount of heroin that made you felt as high as a kite in 2005 five, six, and seven, now just makes you feel okay in 18. You never felt awesome, but it wasn't a crisis period. There, nice little head and shoulder there, uh, coincided with our oil short call for CV19 stating single digits, go long gold, short oil, and we're in that part of the world. So that was the crash. Now you're saying to me, Jesus, man, what's this all got to do with crypto? What are we saying is, is there's economic swings going on here. And beware, beware, beware. It was not a good time to be long crypto during the period of economic crisis. It only started after subprime, so you have to look at everything to the right-hand side of this black line. But late 16 was not particularly helpful. 
uh, for crypto, but it was still fairly small. So it could go up regardless of macro. People thought it was a separate world, and to some degree it was. As it got bigger and got drawn more in, and all the money that are in the that is in the macro world, not crypto kids, uh, libertarians, and you know, the people that were no longer participating. But as all the traditional money has come in, we've been absorbed into the macro of economics. That's why you're listening and looking at a chart like this that hasn't said anything about Bitcoin or any alts yet. But we'll get there, in fact, very shortly. So the CV19 event is well remembered by crypto folks because Bitcoin had gone as high almost as 14K, actually hit four uh, as, the, as the event came down. You will recall that, and it was worse for alt tokens too. Um, then you got the CV19 stimulus, and that's what gave you 69 later on our first cup gold nugget that many of you who watch this channel for, for many uh, years will know what we're talking about on the big macro setup. That met our target very, very well of around 53 uh, 54k on the left shoulder of a head and shoulder and in fact the stimulus gave you a second rally that only just took out the previous high because it was still coming and still dropping but it was really the end of the bull market at the 64,000 that was the head and we were selling the top of the first shoulder the left shoulder you would have closed started closing on what was a run from well down uh, the 9,000 9,500 to 10k levels so that's where it was all before you are now in the state but remember CV19 the real lows only sort of happened March of 2020 however you were already, this is a leading indicator. So I'm showing you something that isn't lagging, unlike the Federal Reserve that focuses on labor, which is the last thing to change when people say, damn, I can't keep this guy. I really don't want to hire again, but I've got to cut him. Uh, we're not making any money. Sales are down. They cut the staff. And then it has to go be captured. He has to go register for unemployment. It has to find its way into a government's office as a statistic. It then has to be collated, put out. And then at an end of a quarter, all those jobs for that year is put out in the following quarter and that's why it's a lagging indicator in fact if you caught it the minute the guy got his fired slip it would still be a lagging uh, indicator it would be a couple of seconds lagging this is a leading indicator because it starts watching that uh, it's actually answering the question that people are stopping buying copper that the inventories aren't running down and they're stopping buying copper so the beginning of the slowing in the rate of the upside and then the, uh, the beginning of some downside is already being captured and inventory is held and less and less buying is going on whilst money goes into a fear, the real fear, not the dollar, um, not the T-bills anymore, although you will see them get a bid if we have a crash. Um, the real fear is gold. It's a fear in the fiat system. It is the canary in the gold mine. And that's where we are. You are here now, done in black. Let's take off all the artworks. You are here now, whilst you might get a rally, I still think you can go lower. Just to highlight, you are lower than the post, the, just the pre.com dip, the post.com recession. You are lower than the, or around the same levels, maybe a tiny bit higher, the Shanghai Accord. And the only two places where you have gone even lower still was the subprime depression that's absolute low was here and the cv19 and what you will notice is that these are mostly extreme events you shut down the whole world for a flu and you blew up the entire housing market uh, low end with bullshit debt that you then proliferated like a virus and sold to every bank in the world as an asset that screwed their banking systems up at the same time they had also had similar save, uh, home booms but not quite as dishonest with the mortgage lending as uh, the US was. So you're actually right now um, only got three events lower than you. Shanghai Accord, Subprime, CV19 and it ain't over yet. It isn't over yet. You went higher here on the stimulus. So this stimulus only made us marginally higher than 18 and never gave us the opium hit of 
QE3 and it certainly didn't give us the opium hit of QE1 or 2 and we could not get to the giddy heights and and I did feel rich here I was in the property business everyone was buying it was easy to get a loan it was smash 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 Whoop, money going out like no problems making coin <laughs> generating mortgages big deal it was easy easy Japanesey driving Bentley GT feeling like a rock star yes you did but that was peak opium peak opium for the masses you don't get it anymore even the uh, proliferation the speed was high but you didn't get the same altitude anymore that came with the printathon and the stimmy checks and right now you are here because inflation and they don't want to they're not in the frame of mind to give you stimmy and checks they need a big crisis they need a name they need an event they need a problem reaction solution okay let's go to the crypto charts i promised you we'd get there i need you to understand this this is why we say there is a demand destroying event that is awaiting a name that is about to hit it'll probably be a false flag it'll probably be anything oh i just said a word that's definitely definitely gonna hit the algo to the downside so because i love to talk honestly to you and speak in freeness unencumbered on an uncensored way you should go hit that like button right now and counter the algorithm and leave a comment where does bitcoin end this year and with that we go to the bitcoin chart so bitcoin this is not particularly spectacular i need to tell you that during this period the dollar hasn't been doing that well um, this is a localized high over here and you're balking at it somewhat um, you did make the lows of your broadening structure uh, and now you are getting become the volatility this is a broadening structure which actually means volatility is increasing you had your two top there which is all part of one impulse and we literally called that top to the cent saying you will hit the key level of significance and the capping descending grind line at 70k and then you will pull back potentially quite hard um, and then we got the yen trade that made that super true and it was even harder than we'd in any way expected and that got us a visit to the bottom of the broadening however since then it's been more of a calming longer run i expect on a weak dollar that you break the red line and then you will advance however it may need some pain to bring in the super juice you see two interest rate cuts 50 basis points done by the fed right now has not done enough to juice this to even get to the other side so far it has not it has not and this is a very news free kind of environment and this is super low vol and there is rejection with top wicks over here as well and you're at that little localized high and you haven't quite made a new high on that this is what i call low volatility after an abc move we did also by the way warn you after any smackdown that you'd probably chop around the splitter you see that little bit up a little bit above a little bit below as far as you were above the splitter so you go below the splitter like a mean reversion and then a little dip and then we went so now we are moving away from the splitter that uh, captures that and we want to go to the other side however you can't rule out the possibility of another reversion to the splitter or maybe even god forbid and that's extreme another visit to uh, the bottom end here I'm not saying it's high probability this I'm just warning you think of that yield curve inversion collapse of the copper SMEs uh, closing bankruptcies uh, credit card debt all the things retail is not going to be moving Bitcoin higher so it needs to be institutions are they going to be wailing in well gold is eating Bitcoin's dinner a little bit at the moment and is running up Bitcoin not so much Bitcoin not so much let's have a look at that chart the Bitcoin gold chart I wasn't preparing to do that but I've suddenly thought well there's a good idea we should have a look at that before we get into the other two cryptos that we'll talk about we need to understand what the big boy is going to do and for that we'll have a look at this so we're on the daily chart at the moment 
I'll take it up to three day. I want to show you this chart. Um, yeah, I want to do it because we have done it before. Here was your first cup gold nugget done on the first. Uh, that was your break and that was your exits on that, on that left shoulder. And then that would have been a very profitable trade in terms of gold ounces. You were in and around four. That's not true. Five five and a bit and you went bang straight on up you ended up you would have got out at around 35 maybe 33 that's 30 so 32 31 ounces so if you had taken um, four of your gold ounces and said I'm getting gonna get Bitcoin for that or five I should say sorry it was five at the first cup gold nuggets what would have happened is if you closed over there you would have had 32 or 33 ounces returned to you. So 5 to 33. So you would have had 6.6, .6, ooh, dare we say 6, devil's number, uh, returned to you. Then you would have held that gold. You would have got the chance to get back in at around 9. And then it would have run up to 30 again. So you could have got another 3x. What's happening now? Bitcoin is losing ground to gold. Bitcoin is losing ground to gold. However, again, people will say you're a bear of Bitcoin. No, we're not bear. What I want to point out is that once you get some stimulus or some driver for news, I would expect longer run, typically, technically, this to break to the upside. I do have a concern that it could first spill out the bottom, though, in a crisis before doing that that's my concern um, and you say but that channel should be like a bull flag and they always break remember patterns are patterns bull flags are what they are we can draw a channel for now it could be a slow grind down and then a sudden spiller you already had a wick that popped through i think that would have been on the yen trade and wine so Bitcoin in this bull market has failed to make a new high in gold ounces. That tells you that this bull market is not really done what it needs to do yet. That means there may be more to come. Um, there may indeed. In fact, how long was the becoming period? What? Let's check this out together because it's just a thought. We go back to our TG Pink. This black is making me feel a bit too grim and gothic for my taste. Uh, so that was the high that was kind of April 64 high and then how late into the absolute low that wasn't doesn't feel as long um, what date was that that's July you see much shorter we're in September where's September you were already back halfway up at September you weren't at a new high when did you make the almost new high you didn't do a new high here that's the other point. The second one, gold, was uh, getting more of a bid. Uh, in fact, let's check that. What was the high there? Let's move all our lovely drawings. No, you did. You made a marginally, very marginally high high. I think it goes with that one there. So the high value was 37. That was 37 and that was 37. So they were all the same value roughly. Uh, I think that one is a little bit lower. It's drawn a little bit lower. So you have yet to make a new high uh, for this. And typically the structure points to that eventually happening. But I can say you've probably noticed that the ETF bull run narrative is just not quite the same as CV19 here's 7 trillion narrative. In terms of momentum, in terms of scale. And I'm wondering, is this part more like, here was the collapse crisis part, more like this bit? It just seems a lot longer. And we are in a pullback awaiting a dip and then a go with quantitative easing and solutions. I'm not sure we'll stay in this without dipping. Because to get the amount of juice we need to really pump, like that pump, 
against gold. Remember, this is BTC gold. We need a lot of risk hot liquidity coming in. And right now, in this current set of environment, with them fighting inflation and rates higher for longer, we're just doing the two cuts, everything is fine. We need to see a loss of control. Okay, I've said enough on that. Let's go and have a look at what else we wanted to show you. So Bitcoin is an underperformer relative to gold. That means actually you should be spending more if you're a trader or even an investor right now. You should be looking more at your investments in the traditional market than Bitcoin. Yes, there'll be one or two high flyers if you're an amazing spotter and everybody thinks they are. You're not uh, for chasing into alt markets uh, coins, but um, the money's being made elsewhere right now in terms of this until such time as it changes until such time as it changes and we set our alerts so that the market tells us and I feel you need event. It's just not going to come. You've done the BTCs, uh, ETFs. Okay, let's have a look at a token we haven't spoken of before. So we discussed this in our community. You're getting it now. You're finding out about it now. But FET, FET, AI, everything is AI, NVIDIA, NVIDIA, woo. Pumper mentals, high, 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 it's fraud, 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 you name it, it's all in there, um, is the big story. And this is an AI uh, token. And yeah, what do you have technically for us, Francis? Well, we have an inverted head and shoulder, and we are now in the grinding up stage. I can move to, let's give you a daily chart, remind you of what it has done. And it did a great deal. Let's make sure we are in log scale here because that's almost too spectacular when you look at it like that. Uh, from, in fact, how far to the listing? We've actually had a couple of squeezes with it. It's given quite good technicals before. That is its origin moment. Let's put it in weekly because that's a bit of a bum chart. Let's do it. That's a, apparently its origin moment. It wore badly on the sell-off of 2020. So a new token that got the FTX, the hedge funds, everybody kicking it in the balls, bad, bad, bad. Okay, horrible. Up you go, up you go, jumped on a ledge. Again, down, down, down. This mirrors Bitcoins, uh, 15K. Then quite a big move, bit of a squeezy, squeezy, and good runs up. We don't need that there. Let's take it off. Um, so that's the weekly chart. Pretty strong token. By the way, we have our best token it is not being discussed that you should be in. And if you want to find out, you should book a call down below. Uh, that will be an investor. It's my crypto investment. If I had a simple amount, many guys will, what will you do if you just have 20 grand or 30 grand? Um, and you're investing like for everything, all markets, or maybe a hundred, let's say. So we've not got lots of things. We're just keeping it super simple, a super simple positioning. 85% gold, 15% this one token. That, in my opinion, has shown technically that it's going to outperform Bitcoin and it's going to do well in an old run. And it had a better bear market and all of those things. That one token. You can go try and guess what it is if you like, uh, because I expect super great things to come out of it. Um, let's have a look here. So you can see broadened, broadened, broadened up. Then it got a bit foxy. Now, that is a flag. That is a flag. Just had a little bit of a dip there. And what happened? There was a perfect little fractal on our basing ascending grind line, and it would have saved you from a spiller, a spiller. Now, the value of spillers is they set up structures for you for later on the upside. You guys battle to trade short. Why? Because you don't have technical patterns, you don't have methods, you don't know where to put a stop, you don't know where to put a target, and uh, it's all very scary because you're actually in crypto because you expect things to go up and it feels satanic. Um, no, no, and no. Um, but anyway, this is a long, so you don't have to deal with that shorting problem you have. You could, of course, book a call below and learn how to make money on the upside and downside, particularly on the worst coins at the worst macroeconomic uh, moments that have super high beta that could see you sell 
100 grands off something and buy it back for 10 later, uh, especially given crypto being what it is. Um, but let's not get too um, sidetracked. So once again, we're on the log scale, we're calling that a left shoulder, we're calling that a head, and we're calling that a right shoulder. Further to that, which gives us a target of 2.2, uh, currently now 1.6, but you could have got in earlier. You could have got in a lot earlier, not at 1.45, because there's a pattern within a pattern. And this is the magic of HVF method. Let's go back to black. You actually had that. And that gives you a pattern within a pattern. So if you drop the time frames, you see you're learning at the same time. We want to help you, even though, um, you know, so many of you say, oh, I, oh, I, tell me the coin. I want something for nothing. Give me something for nothing. Feed me. Yeah, we've given you a lot. We've given you a lot and we want to keep doing it and we want to keep helping you get better. That's the game. Uh, but you, at the same time, we, we still have commercials. Uh, always know what people's reasons are for doing what they do. I, I think that's a great rule of thumb for being successful in life. Some of them want to sell you a token. Some of them want to do something else. Some of them are wanting you to buy a product that's in a link below. We are one of those. Get some silver. Link below. Um, but more importantly, we want you to book a call and become a member of a community and accelerate your gains. Why? Because we get money. It's great to get money. But at the same time, we get opportunity to value add at a more intense level um, with lots of pre-recorded um, support. Webinars three times a week, Sunday as well, separate session and give you the updates as they happen real time. Uh, in a community that is safe from the prying eyes. The five eyes prying eyes. Let's put it there. So what am I doing here? I'm trying to draw something for you. I'm going to have to change the time frame a little bit. So what you might note is the drawing tool, which is another thing that is made available to our community, is giving us a valuation. And it says 1.818, which is not as high. So you use the smaller pattern, which is the HVF, the Hunt Volatility Funnel, uh, setup to break you in earlier and get you a tighter stop on the bigger pattern, which is the inverted head and shoulders. So you keep the target. Way, don't do that. I'm smashing the, smashing the lights. Hit it, shoot out the lights. Come on. Okay, sorry. I'll try not break the place. But so you get in long here on that wick and you get in uh, with a stop there. Now, a normal head and shoulder trader would get long there. You might say, ah, that's not much of a difference. But his stop's got to be down under the right shoulder. That is the typical. It's still a pattern. It's still a shoulder until the shoulder is run. Therefore, you got, could eat an immense amount. Now, just think about the difference. And this is the benefit of risk-reward. Think about the difference between the two trade ideas. The guy that just has the macro idea is here. Let's say he saw, waited for, and has that. His risk stop is there. He is getting a risk reward ratio of 1.67. That means if he wants to make a hundred grand, he probably needs to risk about 70 grand to do it. Um, and that's a lot. That's a lot to risk. However, if he wanted to make a hundred grand and he understood HVF method and was in a community where we discussed this kind of very thing all the time on an ongoing basis, he would A, make more profit. You see that, what I did there. B, have a significantly tighter stop and his trade would go from a 1.67 to a 10.76. That's utilizing two patterns. You see, I fooled you there holding up the three. Um, it's two patterns 
to multiply your way to a bigger and better outcome, um, as opposed to just trading the one uh, inverted head and shoulder. Now, it has to be said, the possibility that you fail is slightly higher, but it is not proportionate to the multiple of betterness in the RRR. So, of course, if you have a stop here, 1.3, it's not the same as having a stop at 1. It's 30% higher. Um, but recognizing that you have that pattern and that you have greater ability and optimism for a very good structure, we trust HVFs more than we trust inverted head and shoulders, you're in a significantly better place for having the confidence in placing a stop a lot tighter. And you get this additional profit over here, which is the difference between getting in a little earlier there and knowing there's a key event coming. Why? Because you get a triggering event which smashes both key levels, then comes back and pullbacks and rests, now on the other side and is a bit grindy, but is still going largely up for now. May make a squeezy, squeezy Japanesey like that, and then pump again and make its 1.818 target and then pull back some. That's what could happen. But then later, get on and make that 2.2 as well. So this is the value. You get to know when to take some off, buy back in on account that there's more to be made. Now, the sizing, the position sizing. 100 grand man who wanted to make 100 grand profit on this trade. Or 10, just knock a zero off, whatever you want uh, to think. Over here, he has to risk call it a grand, to make his 10, or 10 grand to make his 100, okay? Um, much better than the other guy that had to risk 70, going on 75,000 to make his 100, or seven and a half to make his 10. Uh, and that's the difference. And in actual fact, if he was prepared to risk the seven and a half, and he goes in seven and a half here, instead, or 75, he's actually going to get 10 times that. And instead of getting uh, 100 grand, he's going to get 750,000 on performance uh, of the event. If he closes 50% of the trade there and locks in profits and has a nice juicy full account, sees it pull back a little bit more and gets in lower down because he knows there's still a further higher outcome, he's actually within the pattern allowed himself one trade. It's like a flight with a, a stop in between uh, where you are and where you want to go and then a little bit of a holiday in between. You've allowed yourself via extra profitville and that's something you could do. That's something um, that could do. So what do you do now? Well, actually, you actually want some drama to bring it down either to the neckline of this or even worse down here. I'm not sure you'll get it, but you could get some pullbacks. You shouldn't chase in at this point. That's our take. But it's one to watch and it's one we expect for upside. And for many of you, if you want to buy us to long trading, you can keep an eye on this token and look for smaller time frame setups, comfortable in the knowledge that it does have some uh, potential for further upside on the basis of two positive patterns that have set up of decent quality. Okay, remember, demand destroying event destroys all these. They wouldn't have seen it coming. It can just... Uh, and that's the wild card that made us uneasy about this entire crypto bull market. So let's show you something else. XRP. We did the final flush out story. Um, so you can take it that the token we're talking about is not any of these two that we're showing you. Um, we did have this dip. That, funny enough, was the yen carry trade dip and it came back quite quick. Lots of alerts in there. That's why it's a bit tough to read the chart there. But that kind of is there. That kind of is there. And we're asking, and some people will be leaving notes and comments, I think the 7th of October... Maybe some will say the 8th or the 9th. I don't know. I think it's the 7th. That there is, what date? Put it in below. What date? When does XRP run? How far is Bitcoin going this cycle? When does XRP run? Uh, what date is the court case? I'm pretty sure it's October the 9th. Uh, so that was previous up top there, uh, 7th. Sorry, the 7th. 
So this is our macro pattern, but I think it can go up and over on a smaller time frame before that happens. You see, we're in something. There's something going down. But before you get too excited, whoops, drag that down. Before you get too excited, there is a possibility this rolls over one more time. You see, it's kind of choppy choppy over here. Choppy choppy. This is a bit of a zone. So it is ascending coming up to a zone. So the 60, the 55 through 62 is a bit of a zone. It's a bit of a seam of hard rock. It's not getting back over that so quickly, but the lows are being bought up. It's being squeezed up. I think you could. Lots of spinning tops. See the bodies here? All through there, but for that one test that was slammed back. Low volatility, sort of holding just below the border, wanting to see the security drop its guard and going to have a shoot for the border. So I think maybe we get another dip down to here before this break occurs. Again, assuming no demand destroying event spoils everything and just intervenes and smashes it, that could be an upside. But don't chase in here, put some limit orders, I would say. See where the technical basing is around about here. I kind of, something about this area I quite like. So from 55 to 57, you may get a chance to get in on that and then you could be hot to trot. We have targets for that and I think we have 80 cents. But we don't have, we don't have a final target because we don't have that down leg. So that's broadly indicating in and around 80. Um, whether it will run beyond that we don't know and start triggering all the dominoes and overperform. It's possible. It is a first setup in a new possible uptrend. Till now we've been downtrend like that. So we're going to have to see. We're going to have to see how it pans out. But my guess is upside for XRP. And invariably the fundamentals will match the technicals. It's going to be news. I think it's going to turn out something favorable. Even if the SEC doesn't register an appeal, that would be favorable. Or they do, but they narrow the case down to very few specific elements. Something in terms of that whole thing is going to pan out okay for XRP. Uh, but because people have been waiting for it, it might be a damn squid it, and just give a small bump and just you know get it higher up around the 80s. Or you could have a contagion effect. It could be a little bit of what Bitcoin needs in that the rest of the crypto markets, and that could also be the alt run uh, a little bit better because Bitcoin needs it less. The other cryptos need, should be at SEC's back on this, uh, uh, XRP's back against the SEC. Because if the clarity comes for XRP, it comes for everyone. Um, so that could help the, the alt runs. So, yeah, we've given you uh, a bit to think about there with FET uh, and Bitcoin, but we've also warned about the wild card. The wild card. It's a pity that there's the, on this bull market, there's this level of phantom that is just hanging over us. Let's have a look at total and see if the conglomerate of alts tell us anything more specific. And how does it differ? Again, Total looks like it's had a flag and it's going to break. Overall, I'm a little bit bullish crypto. I just don't think Bitcoin is looking so great uh, right now. And it's actually alts might, we might eventually. Remember the Bitcoin dominance we said. So we haven't updated you in a bit. We said Bitcoin dominance needs 58 and a half. We'll go and have a look at that. Let me just remind you, mark to self. This is a continuation pattern, much like Bitcoin. I just hope it doesn't get brought back in with the wild card. At the moment, technically, it is showing no awareness of that. I think it's squaring up, as we like to say, and is potentially going to uh, set up for an upside move and hopefully one that will make a new high. That's total three. Um, good Good, good potential chart, good recovery from there. 
Um, obviously, Bitcoin was the dominant mover of the early part of this bull market. And I'm not so sure it's, we are still in that phase where we can legitimately say it's early anymore. Let's take um, total two. Not that different a feel to it. I wouldn't expect that. But this does have Ethereum in. And Ethereum has been a little bit off. Apart from its ETH Euro run that we called, it's not been particularly brilliant. And it hasn't come out of its broadening structure. I would call it a broaden. This one didn't quite make uh, there. I think I prefer a total three than I do Ethereum right now. Uh, the one with Ethereum in it. Uh, in terms of the technicals. Okay, let's go to that Bitcoin dominance. Is it peak Bitcoin now and are we going to get bigger moves out of the others? And is it going to be an alt run or any sign of something else? So Bitcoin dominance, what did we say? Here's what we said. 58. In fact, uh, a lot of this has been done now. Right the way through, we highlighted, we hedged you up right down here on Bitcoin dominance, which was actually more warning about how bad the alts would do. Bitcoin's done okay since then, but it hasn't been exceptionally brilliant. But the alts have been dull. King alt Ethereum, probably one of the most uh, responsible for it because of its weighting in the rest of the, the alt uh, space. Then we gave you this upside and said, right. We showed you the inverted Bitcoin dominance chart, and I'm going to show you that again, and said this still has to go to its target. I'm not sure you've done that. I'm not sure. Let's have a look. I think you did. I think you did. 58.5 and you did it you did it you did it so for us Bitcoin um, is now in progress decay. So here we go. We've got it up on the Bitcoin dominance. I've just done the draw tool for you. And you can see our target has been met. It was around 58.36. You made a 58.5. And since then, you've pulled back hard. You also had, how awesome is this tool, by the way, uh, for doing the draws. You had the first interim made. There you can see it in dotted there. You pull back and you support it on it. You then went to second interim. You put a stall box in there. In fact, it's almost like a little mini structure of its own around the second interim. And then you went home to target and now you're in a pullback phase. There you go. Absolutely brilliant performance. And until we get any new structures on Bitcoin dominance, our view now is actually you don't want to be in Bitcoin. Uh, you want to probably be in the alt. Let's remind you of that inverted BTC dominance which we say hasn't got too much more to go before potentially you get that alt mega run. Again, the alt mega run is got to have some form of collapse and urgency or need about it. It's going to have to have that. So how does it look? This is it. We've shown it to you before um, and we want to show to you again we don't have it's early it is early in the trade it is early in the trade so if we go something like that that is what we are called on the macro which says bitcoin will in fact be likely the wrong holding to have so once it's finished on its smaller time frames, we called that little pattern. We said 58 and a half. We said this is coming, but you might drop one more time. So this is the inverted chart of Bitcoin dominance, market cap Bitcoin dominance. It's an inverted one. So you can see the numbers higher here than it is there. That is the total value of Bitcoin compared to the rest of the pool. Where's the big growers going to come? It's actually going to come in tokens that already are big enough to have enough liquidity. It's not going to come 
from 600%, number 600 on market cap. Yes, there'll be a couple of small ones that will moon, but like it was in the dot-com boom, it was Cisco, it was Amazon, it was eBay, it wasn't pets.com, it wasn't bridal.com, it wasn't all that nonsense. Okay, so here you go. That's your setup. We see this moment will be coming not too far off. Unless, of course, we get another upside setup on the shorter time frame. So we said at the time when this was happening, you may get one more push down there. You may get one more push down. You are coming to our capping descending grind line of the Bitcoin dominance. Which means it's going to stop being the dominant one and actually start shedding market cap to somebody else who's moving really fast. Our token particularly that you don't know, but you can click the link below and book a call and find out. Um, but that story aside, you may get one more dip. We've got that now. We've got that now. And if we assume that's a low and we get a nice strong move and a bit of a pullback, um, then you will be getting a huge move. 21.62% in Bitcoin. And the only way that happens is a mega market of bullishness. So that means whatever hell forsaking, demand destroying event, doom porn dude guy talks about that brings us down is actually going to lead to a major upward valuation in alts, which is the opportunity that always goes with the crisis. As we always say, come and get richer with us. Learn how to maximize this and find out the key and best tokens. And they will be worlds apart in uh, outright performance. And technical analysis will help you see what's going because their footprints in the sand can't be hidden. And that is the money that chases in. And we've already seen who's held up better and why. And it will shock some of you um, if, I t if you knew who it was. Um, anyway, it's not the only thing we do. Even if you have that token, there will be better opportunity. There will be periods where other things will run. We'll get setups. You'll be able to utilize leverage, but a bull market cannon will come. It may, however, be associated with a major crisis that sees an acceleration of funds going into your new world order digital uh, system which will see certain alts absolutely rip and you will see Bitcoin that is sitting at 57.5, more than half of everything of value. And this is going to be a terrible time for maxis and it's going to be an amazing time for alts. Um, but that is our call. Bitcoin will, maybe not in this cycle, but in future cycle as well, it won't, won't all unfold in a day. Please understand this. This in of itself could take, you know, three months to up leg and then a two months sideways. And then you've got to bounce around in the funnel for three months and then you eventually break. That's when it will get normally quite quick. And then you're having a major runners. That could be, you know, it could be a year from now. It could be two years from now that you get to target or three years. You know, uh, but if you're in the right tokens, boy, will you be making a multiple, a massive multiple on Bitcoin's performance because Bitcoin will be shedding market cap and it may actually be going up too, just less so. Yeah. And that's where it becomes more stable and more like gold. And then, you know, who knows? OK, guys, that's the key message. So what did you learn today? Let's just summarize. We showed you FET. We told you where we think it's going to go. Um, and it's an AI play. Uh, it is not the token in question. We revisited XRP. We showed you what it's doing, uh, why it might get a small little dip, but actually could go uh, back up to the 80 cents if it's been given a run. Um, by the way, could be part of that reducing Bitcoin's market cap if it got its mega shoot on its bigger target. Do we still have the XRP chart up? Um, yep, we do. Let's go back to the weekly and remind you of that. So we have called in this instance when it comes that you would be in and around the $19 uh, dollar mark if any of these is our third impulse. We will redraw later once it starts moving and we'll confirm that target. But 
XRP might be part of that Bitcoin dominance uh, failing chart. Then we've revisited after discussing uh, Bitcoin against the dollar. We visited Bitcoin versus gold. We said you need to watch when it starts to move more than gold, but it could first do a spill before going up. Um, and we saw that cross valuation. And now we're on the Bitcoin dominance. You saw that the target we warned you of, which is bad for alts, Bitcoin gaining dominance is often going less down than everything else or in a sideways market uh, Bitcoin, for Bitcoin, it's a soft market for alts. We warned you that that wouldn't be good. We saved you from being too committed. You should have been in more tether during this period. You wouldn't have gone down. Bitcoin 70k, if you had got your alts out at Bitcoin 70k and were sitting in tether, you would have the same value now. The alt, you can buy them all back virtually for less, bar one or two. Uh, and certainly the Bitcoin for less as well. Um, where is our friend Bitcoin today where we started? That's him against the gold. And let's just say, I think it was 63 and a half if I'm not correct. Uh, so 63 and a half against the measly dollar and 63.1, 63.4. Yeah. So that's where he is for now. Um, don't forget also, we've shown you the CPI version and that actually it's still below the previous highs on a CPI adjusted basis, which is with their fake CPI number. So if you have a look at that, that's the high you're at. It's both below the 69K high, the secondary high and the 64K high. And in fact, you're a fair bit lower. You do have the same structure, of course. Um, that is the broadening structure to the downside. That's a fat cookie. Okay, so that's everything we covered with you today. I hope that's been helpful. There's so much more we can do to help you in building your wealth during reset times, guys. That's why gold's running. Dollar is not a reserve asset. Your value will be destroyed. The debt markets are in an orchestrated state of collapse. This is a call to arms and action. Maximize your gains. This is your biggest and best chance. The controllers of this rigged game will be stealing many people's wealth in this transition. They always use a war to max enrich themselves. They always will use a big collapse like this to maximize the enrichment. They are vampires. You must protect, build, and then buy with that optionality for passports, places to live and many other things so that you can protect your family members as well as yourself. Till next time, we appreciate you sharing and liking and we'll catch you then. Bye. Tired of profit wipeouts and blown accounts from following trade signal groups and other YouTube channels? Looking for a better way to trade, reduce your stress and minimize your risk? Become a skilled technical analyst and see the charts and markets in a new light using the successfully proven HVF method by Francis Hunt while being surrounded and supported by a principled, structured, and experienced community. Enjoy a constructive learning environment while practically trading markets, supported by a bespoke platform, run through browser and app, specifically designed to teach and engage you whilst learning and growing as the markets move. This is not a Telegram or Slack signal group. All trade ideas are based on a proprietary technical analysis process honed over decades, which is the HVF method, leading to trade ideas with fast-moving breakouts and tight stops, exact entries and exits, nuanced interim considerations, and ultimately, strong rewards. Submissions are graded and scored by Francis for potential high-quality setups, and we provide bespoke tools to help get the job done properly and with precision. Over time and with focused effort, you'll begin to look at charts and price action just like Francis. Community updates every day by Francis and our three webinars a week provide a 360-degree approach, which are presented by our experienced team of trade leaders to spot potential trades. We're a community of self-actualized individuals spanning the globe and active 24-7, 365. The premium community provides a warm, supportive, and cooperative place for people willing to listen, participate, contribute, and to learn. We've changed thousands of traders' lives. Transform your approach to trading now. Transform your life. Book an introductory call with us on the link below.